Hello everyone and welcome to Wowhead Weekly number 253. Today's show is a special one. It's the official launch show as the Shadowlands expansion is launching in just under two and a half hours, if I did the math correctly. Uh, we are live here on Twitch and taking all sorts of questions and covering discussions, everything to do with the launch and uh, anything else that might be worth covering since we um since last week's show today's show we have a special guest with us as well because the best way to welcome a new expansion is to spend it with friends right <laughs> before we introduce uh, our guest though let me introduce myself i'm annie or also known as annie fuchsia and uh, my co-host for the night and always is the lovely perculia hey everyone i'm perk i run wowhead uh, I'm slightly crazy for doing this show right now because we still have to <laughs> get the site ready for launch, but it's still really good to, you know, share what we've been working so hard on and, you know, like talk one-on-one -on -one with you guys. Um, so we also have an additional special guest who is not a cat. Brightpaw is off practicing his leveling rotation. We are joined by special guest Brutal Static who uh, is also a WoW streamer, and he also is one of the main contributors for Azeroth Autopilot, which many of you are going to be using in a few hours to get through yeah. those Shadowlands leveling zones quickly. So what, you know, what better than to have someone that can explain a lot of your leveling questions and be expert Listen, on that topic? I'll take all the credit. If you have any if you have any problems or trouble, go to the Discord, all right? Just go to the AP Discord. <laughs> I can't help you. I'm sorry. You're on your own, pal. <laughs> Wait, no, we, we, we can't ask you, you to fix our here. problems? Yeah. Why is today. this Wait, why, why are you here then? <laughs> just to soak up the limelight. I'm just here to look good. <laughs> to appreciate it. I do appreciate you being, bringing me on here today. No, I, I, I do contribute to AAP. Um, yeah, I'm no, a, that's a awesome. I'm a streamer primarily, so. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you guys. I really do. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today for this show. This uh, Shadowlands launch show. A very special one. Uh, it is. To respond yeah. to chat, I noticed Perk's camera is lagging, but her voice was perfect, so I didn't want to interrupt anything. Um, I I is suggest it fine now? no, it's still lagging. Brutal is not laggy, which suggests it's not on my end. Uh, but I was wondering if you could maybe just uh, switch the server um, on your end to make it. Uh... Yeah, it, it could be US EU East. because I think I yeah. called. Yeah, if you could change it to US East, that should be good. All right. Yep. Your eye is blinking and it's looking much better. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. I didn't want to hey. interrupt the uh, the speech because uh, they had a good roll going. So here we are. Yeah. Yes. Without video lag, Shadowlands launch show. We have Perculia so, yeah. here. We've got Brutal here. And uh, yeah, lots to talk about. Really exciting. Yeah. So um, we're going to start off by t discussing some of the pre-patch, just, just briefly, but it's been like a really busy week with the pre-patch. I think we should at least just, you know, give it a little like honorary mention and then the obvious early launch stuff. And then we'll go into some of the uh, Ian uh, interview discussion we had last week, which feels like it was like a month ago already and not, mm -hmm. you know, three days. The last week uh, has been so insane. Yeah. yeah. So, do you want to shout out the subs quickly before we then move into the pre-patch? Yes, Annie? that sounds like a great idea. So we have some people here who have subbed and resubbed to the channel, uh, to the Twitch channel here on Wowhead. Let me quickly shout you guys out. We've got Toes Top Gaming with the Prime sub. Thank you very, very much. We got Master Sora with a four-month resub. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we got Uni Bunny. A new subscription there as well. Yeah. Thank you very much for supporting us. We got Aliana Marina with a four month resub as well. Thank you. Taylor with a 10 month resub. And ooh, how do we pronounce this? Um, <laughs> XZORN with a three month resub. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, as we mentioned earlier as well, we are live on Twitch right now. So if you're watching us on the Wowhead page, unless you're watching this on YouTube a few days later, um, you can feel free to join us here on Twitch and ask any questions uh, in the chat and we will try to keep up with everything because this is the best time to get together, get ready, prepare, ask questions and learn things to be, uh, to be ready for the new expansion. Yeah. 
So yeah, the Shadowlands pre-patch, uh, I know when we first discussed it, we're like, you know, the rares are interesting, but there's not much going on. And then the zombies hit and it just it really brought everything to life, I think. And it gave me kind of classic WoW vibes where people were, well, I guess, because the event started from Vanilla WoW, but it was that idea where the players are kind of making their own narrative uh, and the events by doing all sorts of things like, you know, spreading the plague in uh, different <laughs> cities. There was that really fun Rextroy video where uh, he made a zombie group take down Tyrion Forgering, who normally you can't attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, obviously you cannot have the invasions going on 24-7, but uh, I think I think seeing how players made their own fun with the bag rotation and now the zombies to a much bigger extent, I, I think that's um, that's notable. Maybe Blizzard can learn and do more kind of things that inspire player, player creativity like that. Mm -hmm. And I like how the zombie things happened also outside of cities because people would be cheeky and, you know, uh, quickly get to different places, unexpected areas, and suddenly you're infected and you're in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, how did this happen? Uh, no, but it's been a lot of fun, honestly. How, have, how has your experience been, Brutal? So I'm, I'm actually in Orgrimmar right now, just hovering well above the ground so I don't mm. become infected during mm -hmm. the middle of the show. And I'm staying <laughs> logged in because I want to make sure I'm in and ready to go for a few hours from now. Mm -hmm. um, I think, as with most people out there, I wound up spending most of my pre-patch time in Icecrown, just farming the mm -hmm. bag across a multitude of menagerie of characters. And I was really lucky because I got my bag and literally one or two kills on every character that I have other than my mage. And it took about 15 kills on my mage, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, Pre-patch has been fine. I wouldn't say it's my favorite pre-patch event ever, but I, 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 I'm a sucker for bag space. I won't go Volpera, <laughs> but I am a sucker for bag space. So I'm, yeah. I've been very happy with the uh, I like Volpera's. Event. Yeah, I think that compared to some of the quest lines for other pre-patches, like the Wrath one was more um, elaborate, but uh, I do think that the zombies were fun, even though people were worried they would be, you know, too nerfed compared to the past. I think that maybe, I don't know, on the PTR or beta, not enough people were testing them, but uh, they seem to be causing enough chaos uh, oh, yeah. know, on live servers. So I think that worked out. And it's fun when you see videos of like the infinite spawns where people go to places that have the NPCs that respawn super quickly. Mm -hmm. And you have like, I saw this video of a wave of zombies in the blasted lands, like just yeah i saw over, that right? too it's like mm -hmm. there's like there's like a curtain you didn't you couldn't even tell they were zombies at first mm -hmm. so uh yeah so you know uh, i think that the pre-patch turned out uh better better uh than we had expected uh at the start uh so yeah i think overall i'm pretty happy with it although again we keep saying this i would have really liked to have seen that uh um, Wrath Invasion armor return, maybe like mm -hmm. high definition version, because the RG yeah. accommodation rewards were like, eh, you know, but yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. definitely a lost opportunity. I, I think that's my yeah. main uh, sort of negative feedback to the pre patch as well. I don't really feel like I came out of the pre patch pre-patch with anything cool. Sure, we have the high definition haunted memento, which is awesome. Uh, sure, we got two bag. extra slots. <laughs> two slots. My bag is now uniform. It's like 13 down, 13 across, whatever it is. But oh like, my goodness, I'm so excited about this. I, I want to visually show that I was part of the pre-patch. And I don't feel like I can visually show that in a cool way to make other people who missed out on the pre-patch be lazy. Not be lazy. I just read that in I the chat. Be that. jealous. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. that. I, I want mean, people to be jealous stress. in the future. Like, oh my God, I missed that thing. I don't have that cool looking sword like you do. You know, that, that's what that's what I want. Yeah, like, I don't think Warlords had a ton of rewards, but when you finish the quest line, you got a title, at least. And uh, there was a similar achievement for finishing the Shadowlands, but I don't believe you get uh, a title for it. So, uh, you know, so, so it's just something would have been nice. And like, yeah, there's the battle pet, but you can still cage it and see it on the auction house. Uh, so, I don't know, it feels like um, there could have been more... Um, thought mm -hmm. into the rewards i know in some of the interviews they talked how with the extra time they were polishing some of the rewards and like little references on the shadowlands beta but the pre-patch case still came out pretty soon so maybe they didn't have enough time to add more stuff to it but mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i just so that that wrath set is so cool and if you made it high definition if you had the original that you could still be like well 
my set's not as cool and my set's not as like pretty but it has little it's more pixels retro. It that yeah. i was there you know like i yeah. am the original one so yeah. i think it would have been cool to bring back with how you know so many parts from the other events got brought back brutal is there Fine. anything high is there anything that could have made the pre-patch feel better for you i see people talking about it in chat right now and i i'm not the biggest like mount collector pet collector title collector out there but so many people love that aspect of the game and i think something as you know simple and truth be told i don't know how complex these things can get behind the scenes but mounts titles pets stuff like that that's what people want that's what people crave and it, it is kind of a shame not to have seen something like like a mount you know accessible with like 500 combinations or what you know however, however much it could have cost mm -hmm. something a bit more expensive than what we've seen already on the vendor um thankfully we had access to the, the scatty or scotty however you pronounce his, his uh his name that mount that you usually get in eat guard mm -hmm. or, or keep whatever done yeah the blue part to drink cool, but like it would have been nice to have had like a specific special mount for these two weeks that you could have grinded toward or you know, farm toward or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, I do, I do find some use of doing dailies on alts, but on my main, for example, when I have the pet, there's absolutely no reason for me to go back and do dailies. Uh, mm -hmm. I was also lucky enough to get the bag on my first kill, so I'm just like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm not coming yeah, back here. I, <laughs> I yeah, finished. I'm, I'm I finished the second part of uh, the quest line, you know, for the second part of pre-patch to get the achievement. I finished that last night because I didn't bother going back for the whole week. And uh, then I discovered, hey, there's there's a portal here now. I have a portal from Stormwind to uh, Ice Crown. I didn't even realize because I haven't spent the time here. But if there was something like a mount or special high definition wrath transmog, for example, uh, or just anything else, I think I would have been more likely to uh, spend more time there on my main because I think sometimes, sure, pre-patch is a great time to catch up on your alts, but it's also nice to to go back with your main and have a, a small goal of some sort. Having the haunted mento <laughs> is amazing. I think that's probably the best part of pre-patch yeah. in my opinion, <laughs> uh, but I would have liked to have something else to whether it's a trend smog or a mount like you said or something else which is a bit more visually um noticeable mm -hmm. something else that could have been done were things with the argent tournament uh, that was inaccessible during the pre-patch and i feel like that was a missed opportunity because so many people were rediscovering ice crown after years of not being there and if the tournament was open you could have had people you know, doing the dailies there or maybe being inspired to pick it up after forgetting, you know, the tournament uh, even existed. And, you know, maybe yeah. the tournament could have been a place where you turn in the Argent commendations and, or, you know, they yeah, have a, like they make have a, a combo place. extra reward. Yeah. Yeah, that um, could have been interesting. Yeah, because I, I just was funny. I was like, oh, well, you know, if you're spending so much time in Ice Ground, you can't do the dailies. But I think it would have been perfect if you were waiting for rares and in between uh you know farming the rares or after you could go do like your dailies in the meantime and then come back mm -hmm. i'm just going to catch up with some questions yeah. in the chat i see a lot yeah. of questions and we're going to try to uh, as we go just pick up any questions and at the end of the mm -hmm. show we'll probably dedicate some time to just go through questions yeah. uh but i saw uh, this one is more of a comment uh for mm -hmm. alts i thought this pre-patch was the worst ever as the loot from the rares didn't have enough high uh, drop rate to help gear alts ready for Shadowlands. Um, my, my comment on this would be, uh, it, it's true, it was quite hard to gear. It wasn't uh, that fun or fast as it has been in the past. Uh, for example, the invasion uh, for Legion. Uh, but I do think that um, as you're farming those rares, if you are unlucky, you probably get enough of the badges to buy the item level 100 from the vendor. So it's not too bad, but I do see that it's not that exciting to farm that way. Although Blizzard did update it as well. Instead of a 20 minute cooldown, it's changed to a 10 minute cooldown. So um, between the rare spawns, which I think helps the alt a lot. It pretty much halves the time that you're spending to get gear. So I think that was pretty good. Um, I also saw somebody ask about Covenant. Go to Covenant for Affliction. Uh, normally would be like, you know, uh, can't maybe go into details for all specs, but uh, Affliction is what I will be leveling as. So I can tell you what I will do, but I can't promise it's going to be good forever as things change all the time. If you asked me two weeks ago, I would have said I'm going Venthyr or Kyrian. And uh, now I'm going Night Fae. So, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And speaking of that, there was a post. You saw the post like three hours ago that was 
changing the yes, covenant ability. Yes, that also right? changed. Yes. Yep, more updates <laughs> on uh, warlocks, which uh, further um, strengthened my decision to go night face. So that's what I'll be. Yeah. I'll Only do. untouched Are... one. Is that what you play, Annie? Is warlock right now? I play warlock. Yes, I've always played warlock. Nice. Yes, nice. and I was. I was a warlock for about three years recently, but oh. I've been a hunter for the past year or so, and I'm in the night. I don't want to complain too much. I'm in the Night Fae Club. I'm not excited about it, but I'm in the club apparently. <laughs> so it is what it is. Well, apparently, uh, so some people. Uh, do Do you like the look of uh, looking like a cute fox? M me? Are yeah. you asking me? Yeah. Do you like it? No. Um, <laughs> no. Because I'm, apparently, there's other forms that you can uh, to get as well, so you don't have to look like a fox. So th that's an option for you. We should um, probably like move on to the next topic. Fox. It's 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 yeah. not a big. Well, let's just let's right. just move on so, to the next topic. It's yeah, apparently, you can be a beautiful unicorn. Th does that sell it for you? <laughs> no. Not convincing. Right. I'm sorry. Was, was that for me or? Yeah, for you. <laughs> for you, Brazil. What was the question? Uh, apparently, you can I'm, be a I'm beautiful. I'm seeing red right now, thinking about being night face. So I'm I'm trying to dial back into the conversation. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, the question is. Or the statement is that you can be mm -hmm. a beautiful unicorn. Does that make Here's you more thing. excited? I don't want to be described as be I'm a Torin hunter. I've got like eyeballs and the arrows sticking like out, of my, out of my out of my gear. Yeah. Listen, let the druids and the the other people who prefer to be night fae enjoy <laughs> it. Prefer. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to hate on those who want to enjoy it. And this is this is a rabbit hole we really don't have time to get into. But for me, I would have preferred to have been a Necrolord from Maldraxxus. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't perform optimally for you know marksmanship or beast mastery. So for me, as someone who prefers to raid at a fairly high level, oh. I don't really have the option to play anything other than what is quote unquote best. I'm actually wearing a Maldraxxus shirt. For the beast, so. Oh yeah, I've got my oh, that, shirt Jinx, on and then right? all the pins. Yeah, yeah, from I Jinx. like all the covenants. I want those. Yeah. <laughs> No one sent me one. <laughs> well, uh, I I should be wearing a Night Fae one, though. I also got a uh, Horde hoodie. Hey, Brutal, maybe this package was meant for oh. you. Maybe. I'm wearing a yeah. taco and an asparagus holding hands. This, this is representative of my buddy <laughs> That's Coltrane. That's cute. I don't know if yeah, you guys know It's the covenants now. working together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> tacos and asparagus for covenants. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I am for all the covenants here, so I can just I these pins. And depending on, I can just be like, oh, class balance. It's like put this pin up, so it's like the best pin, and I can like move them around, <laughs> <laughs> and it can be like cheerless being changed. Yeah, no, I feel, I feel uh, like this was probably a package meant for brutal, um, oh, maybe yeah. because uh, the horde. Uh, I don't know what the thought process was behind that. I'm clearly for the alliance. Uh, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should burn this, or maybe I should send it to brutal. <laughs> <laughs> send it my way. It'll be I'll squeeze into it. It's, it's no big deal. Oh, but yeah, that, yeah, that's actually a really fun little detail too. Brutal is for the horde, and then me and Park yeah. for the alliance. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, alliance. I remember the last time yeah. we were here. My yeah. alliance chair mm -hmm. got here. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> very yep, much yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. Another quick pre-patch topic before we go on to leveling in Shadowlands. Um, I don't know how much you guys read, but I just wanted to shout this out because I thought it was cool and people watching should check it out if they haven't because it explains a lot of stuff. There was a short story called We Ride Forth that provided the context behind the BlizzCon uh, cinematic. Uh, have you guys read it or, or not? It had really cool art. I did I know not about read it, it yet, read but it. yes, same. Right. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, it's not really spoilers, but obviously Bolvar fights Sylvanas and we learn what the other four horsemen were doing. Like, why weren't they with him? Or, you know, like, did Bolvar know about this in advance? And uh, I liked it for two reasons, um, very different reasons. The first was that, um, like, it's it goes into, like, a lot of serious things, like the corruption with the uh, helmet that Bolvar is wearing. And... Careful, corruption might be a trigger word. Careful, careful, <laughs> careful. And what I, I thought it was interesting how, you know, when he became the Lich King, he was like, no one no, I'm the Lich King. And he, like, was, like, like sort of, like, noble and suffering, but in silence. And it, you know, has caused a lot of confusion. And his personality is sort of doing the same thing. And he has this plan that's so convoluted that the four horsemen think he's been not corrupted, but, like, possessed by the helm to the point where they want to uh, attack him. 
And I'm like, wow, Bulbar, you really messed that up. You, mm-hmm. you know, the four horsemen want to, you know, attack yeah. you now. And then uh, the other thing, which is really different, was that we get to see their personalities. And um, I, I, just, I just think it's cool when you see these famous lore characters interact and they've got senses of humor. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And like uh, Nazgrim is like telling Bulbar, you know, Mokhtar, Ogar. Oh, no. End. And it's just, it's, just, <sighs> it's just really funny when you see characters that, you know, maybe you less saw them as like a boss or you assume mm-hmm. that they're, you know, like, you're like in charge of something and now they're mm-hmm. you, you get to see them like you know drinking at like the death knight bar and cracking jokes with each other and having like a kind of edgy sense of humor so i yeah. think it's a fun short story uh to read and it answers a lot of questions surrounding um the cinematic and explains also why allied races are death knights and why the zombies are running all over the place so it fills in a lot of gaps oh okay mm-hmm. and it's really short so even if you don't like to read it's like four pages online so. Oh, this is definitely yeah. worth reading. And here, yeah. here's a fun little visual to showcase the art. And um, also, I linked the uh, Wowhead article on it in the Twitch chat in case you guys want to check it out. Yeah, maybe if we have Nobble on the show some other time, we can do like a deep dive on that and some oh, of the other recent yeah. things. Yeah. But I think that because we have Brutal here and it's Shadowlands launch day, we should instead do more of a deep dive on oh. leveling in oh. yes yes, yes. <laughs> so brutal tell us about azroth autopilot all right so a lot of you guys have probably heard about azroth autopilot it's been around for two expansions now and before bfa it was called khan's legion i want to be very clear about something up front i am not the creator i'm not the maintainer i'm not the author i'm just one of the the largest contributors to the add-on and the author, Zyrael, he and I worked hand-in-hand hand pretty closely over Alpha and Beta. Great guy, great add-on, right? Cool. Mm-hmm. If and when you decide to install AAP, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just, you know, install it as per usual. Type in slash AAP. You can fiddle with some of the settings. But the entire purpose of Azeroth Autopilot is to guide you, and more or less to hold your hand through the leveling process. Mm-hmm. This expansion, it does work for both Horde and Alliance because whether, you, whether or not you know, we're all being funneled the exact same leveling experience from first quest to the last quest um and the whole point of aap is just to make things a bit more you know not brainless per se because you still need to know what you're doing where you're going and so on and so forth but it does give you one of those nice little tom tom arrows but you don't need tom tom installed it's integrated and built in it spells things and explains things for you on your screen gives you tips and tricks on the way i mean i could sit here and talk about it for multiple I'm sold because I've been working on it for oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, downloading it's, it's, it's it already really I mean AAP <laughs> is, is one of those things to where it's, it's an optimized route it's it's not you're, you're most likely not going to get world first or server first using it especially if you haven't practiced on the beta if you haven't been you know running and, and leveling on the beta mm-hmm. um it's 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 not specifically designed to get you there before everyone yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be the fastest mm-hmm. I'm gonna be the best it's just it's meant to, to get you 260 hitting all of the important points in this case you have to be 53 before you leave bastion i believe you have to be 55 before mount you, you leave mount draxis right. 58 before arden wield and so on and so forth so if you follow aap you'll do all of the required story points to get you know to the end of that zone to finish off the covenant for that zone mm-hmm. and you're most likely going to dink 60 before the end of a revendreth so you will need right. to do a little bit after you dink 60 that's kind of unavoidable because, again, you have to be 58 before you leave Arden. It's kind of a weird thing that Blizzard did this expansion, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, a great so... add-on. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate for it. So mm-hmm. Yeah, so just to back up a bit, um, for the people that weren't on the Shadowlands beta that are wondering how leveling works in Shadowlands, you can uh, enter the Shadowlands quest. You can start that at level 48, I believe, and you'll all be funneled to a special uh, little intro scenario in the Maw, um, which may have some bottlenecks, which we have a guide on if you're like, oh my god, like, why is everyone killing the same mob? And then you must do the four zones in a certain order. So having something like Azeroth Autopilot is um, just, like, important to help streamline it. Uh, this isn't like past expansions where you could just, like, pick, you know, pick whichever zone to go into first. Like, you know, Legion had, um, like, the four like, the four zones available that you could pick between. Mm-hmm. So you have to do Bastion, then Maldraxxus, then Ardenweald, and then Revendreth. And then you pick the Covenant, uh, while meanwhile on your alts, once one character is max level, your alts can uh, level in this kind of flexible system called Threads of Fate, where 
you can, you know, just do random objectives and don't have to follow that strict path. But for the first time, you have to um, level in the strict order. Do you think that there's going to be, like, more bottleneck problems because everyone is funneled to the same place? Like, even BFA had Horde and Alliance um, split up. Like, do you think Bastion's yes. going to be this big, laggy <laughs> yes. mess? Short answer, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, where do you if want you, me to start, so Perk? You, yeah. You've probably read, you know, um, Dess's guy. Like, you got, Wowhead does yeah. a great job posting Dess's stuff. He's incredibly well-known and incredibly good at leveling quickly. He's going to be probably one of the first people to ding, as we all know and expect. You've probably read other guides or heard your friends or guildmates or whoever talking about it, right? Yeah. Unlike BFA, unlike Legion, unlike Wad, et cetera, et cetera, we're all being put into the same zones, from the Maw to Bastion and so on and so forth. And if you're not ahead of that pack... You might have a problem or two on the way to sixty. Yeah. So you if might you have want war to mode on, for a few more hours. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just just buckle up. You know, my the, I practice. You know, I, my stream for the past few months has been almost nothing but leveling for the most part. I've mm -hmm. just been practicing, practicing, practicing. I don't expect to be server first, and definitely not world or even region first by any stretch. My whole goal is just to get ahead of as many people as possible, mm -hmm. and to you know just, just break free from that pack and that that chokehold, that bottleneck, whatever you want to call it, because it will be an issue, especially with war mode. So, good luck, everyone. So that's I interesting. Is... Yeah, go ahead, Annie. Uh, I was gonna say that's interesting. I didn't actually realize because I haven't done the entire leveling part. I've done the mall leveling part, you know, because I thought being mm -hmm. slightly familiar with the first part is important when you when you're starting off. Uh, but I didn't realize that the quest lines are exactly the same for both factions, yeah. the whole way. Yeah, I mean, the, getting through them. If you can, this might sound ridiculous, but if you can get out of the mall and then by extension, you, there, you have to go to Orbos between yeah. the mall and faction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If mm -hmm. you can get out of the mall and out of Orbos, literally even five minutes three minutes ahead of everybody, you can breathe a bit more of a sigh of relief. If you stop and use the restroom or grab a drink or whatever, hey, you're probably going to fall back into the path. <laughs> right. If you, if you're, if you yeah. want to take leveling seriously, and I get it, it's to each their own, right? You know, for me, I've seen it all. I've done it all. So I don't need to stop and smell the roses. I can just brisk my way through the process and get to max level and then start enjoying max level content because I've, I've done everything on the beta in terms of leveling. So mm -hmm. someone who hasn't played beta, someone who hasn't leveled a bunch of characters, don't worry about it. Enjoy yeah. yourselves. Chill. Have fun. Read the quests. Enjoy the new characters, the new zones, everything. It's, it's a lot of fun. And if you don't want to get also, stuck, you just take a nap and come back two, three hours later when everyone exactly. is ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Perk. I was also going to say that um, Blizzard has made it so you cannot start working on like max level uh grinds before the weekly reset so you shouldn't mm -hmm. feel pressure yeah to... that's also Absolutely. true like, yeah it's more of a yep. na problem versus a eu but like if you're na you shouldn't be like oh if i level and i hit 60 at 9 p.m then i can like you know run i can like you know collect all this like soul ash i can you know do all this uh you know i can get extra loot like i can do these things before the reset tuesday morning they've made it so mm -hmm. Um, you can't get that extra head start. Yeah, uh, they've, they've done a lot of stuff like that. I mean, God, I don't know if you guys want to talk about this a little bit later, but between, you know, not having access to certain things at max level, you know, the, the various nerfs to, like, draft of tin lands, gun shoes, mm -hmm. um, the dungeon nerf that we're, you know, that... that yeah, that this, we this morning earlier. was very... Uh, a lot of unexpected news. I've got so many, like, guide announcements I need to put live, but it's like, oh... There's actually something more important to post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, I saw the tweet from Jinji uh, with the uh, there, dungeon update. Yeah, you know, the the way that I'm looking at it, you know, for better or for worse, whether you agree or disagree, I think this is probably one of the health. This sounds weird to say, but one of the healthiest launches for players. Like there really is no pressure, no mandate, no real reason to grind, 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 grind. Gotta get to max level because right. there's not that much to do at max level. You can just just enjoy the process. If you mm -hmm. want to speed mm -hmm. level, do it. Have fun. But if you don't, then you're not really missing out on anything, which is good in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. No, I, th I think it's really good that they decided to make it so you can't actually get any advantage by being done mm -hmm. before reset time. So um, people who are leveling slow and people who are leveling fast will uh, pretty much be on the same page. Uh, and I, th I think that's yep. uh, that's good for like yeah. health reasons <laughs> uh, for people, people to not go crazy. Yeah people are saying things like oh like there's no content at max level like this is like just to specify it's more like 
end game character progression um because i've been putting a lot of collection guides live for transmog and mounts and pets and we we're doing some uh comparison of the number of things added in ba versus shadowlands and there's a lot more things that players can go out and get um in shadowlands so if you're like what do i do you can you know go try to start working on some mounts to collect you know maybe works try to get like you know professions like transmog sets yeah you can work on your professions there's like lots of kind of like Im immersive like little little side things you can do um in the meantime working on your covenant sanctum uh and other stuff um so yeah but i think it is healthy how the max like the max level progression stuff is more like paced out so you don't feel like compelled to you know grind islands uh 24 hours of the mm -hmm. day yeah. um and you can instead maybe enjoy like the aesthetics that your covenant has to offer in the meantime Oh, I've noticed this question a couple times now in the chat, so I'll take it and I'm sure more people will ask throughout the night. Uh, will the servers reset? No. So the way it's no, been... No, there's maintenance. But yeah, go ahead. Wait, there is? Yeah, As the expansion launches? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, there's maintenance um, Tuesday, November 24th at 7 a.m. Oh, yeah. Hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, don't, don't play don't plan on playing then yeah no i I meant more like uh for the expansion to be launched people are wondering if they need to like log out or if there's some kind of reset or anything like that and there isn't yeah. you just you stay online you go to storm and stand or i guess orgamar for horde uh you stand yeah. outside the keep <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brutal. Go to Stormwind. <laughs> uh, you stand outside the keep, and then the question—I mean, the quest will just pop up for you, and then you get started. You don't need to relog. Actually, I highly recommend you to not log out when it's like 15 minutes left or so, because you may have trouble logging in if you end up doing that. So, uh, make sure you're logged in in good timing, and yeah, just wait for the quest to pop up. Yeah, I dropped. Um... I dropped a where to get quest uh, link into the notes if anyone wants to drop that in chat because we have an article on like where exactly you should be. And looking at Wowhead, 10 minutes ago, oh, yeah. we just posted where to log out. Blizzard mm -hmm. has added a no mount zone directly to where Ooh. the Shadowlands experience starts. So, uh, yeah, you cannot mount up and block the NPC with your gigantic mammoth or yak. Oh, you mean like in Stormwind where you have the quest? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you were dismounted <laughs> automatically now, as of 10 minutes ago. Okay, cool. Because uh, we also have the maw, which is completely uh, mountless. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to have a gun little shoe bit... Nerfed. Yeah, gun shoes are nerfed. <laughs> if you want to have a little bit of an advantage, uh, you can smile and oh, be goodness. happy if you're a worgen. Uh, because apparently your uh, sort of mount form still works. Um, but apart from that, Druid. it's going to be... Yeah, druids, of course. <laughs> apart from that, it's going to be uh, lots of running lots of running get your speed potions yeah so yeah is there any more things you want to say about Azeroth autopilot or leveling brutal before we discuss um covenants if, if it's not an issue i have every expansion because i've been doing like leveling stuff for expansions now uh, if it's okay with you guys i'd love to post a, a leveling companion that i built in chat that would people oh, can access yeah, that. Sure. So what's that? So you guys can check that out. Um a couple of a really really quick because oh, th th I really that could got, talk about this for hours. That got timed out. Um, if you could uh post oh. it do you do you have the uh Google Docs open? As in like you want me to like paste it in our Discord? Uh yeah if you paste it yeah or in the Discord yeah that works too then sure. I can paste it um in sure. the chat. But yeah just a couple of real quick tips guys because some okay, people may not know about this draft of 10 lands was deactivated as of this morning wow he tweeted about it and they posted about it so if you were planning on getting an extra 10 percent boost for a couple of levels it's not going to happen make sure you have your experience banners um annie just talked about light um lightfoot potions those are really the only consumables that work in the mod at this point in time and they're on a five minute cooldown as of 9.0 but yeah, if you go through the leveling companion, uh, I have various tabs here that kind of give you just a bunch of tips and tricks and ideas cool. for consumables and so on and so forth. And make sure you check out the Week Aura tab because my buddy Luxthos, who was a guest about two months ago on oh, yeah. Weekly, he has a great, I'm talking, this thing is amazing. You want, it's the coolest experience bar Week Aura you've ever seen. You got to check that out. Oh, an experience Week Aura. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so cool. It, it shows you like, um, uh, a whole bunch of information. Just, I, I'm not going to take up the time to talk about it. Just go to go to the, the the tab and click on all those weak ores and stuff. And 
yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'll be monitoring chat. So if you have any questions about leveling or what something on the companion may may advise or recommend, then please let me know. It's, it's something I'm really I love leveling. I'm really passionate about it. So yeah, this is great. I see here, and I'm reminded about the battle standard as well, the experience mm -hmm. battle standard. People mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like myself have those rotting in our banks, uh, but we should <laughs> definitely take those out and start spamming them. And if you have guildies, I don't know if you guys knew, but if you have guildies who are in the vicinity of where you are and they use this banner, it counts for you as well, even if you're not in the same party, because it basically works guild wide. Um, I think it's up to 100 yards. As long as you're in the same guild, uh, everyone will get the experience bonus i'm probably just gonna macro it into one of my abilities so i use it all yeah. the time well, and speaking of bonuses the anniversary event uh ended yesterday but when you do start caring about reputation if you're you know trying to unlock a legendary recipe the pilgrim's bounty event is live and that still has a 10 percent reputation bonus with oh. the a spirit of sharing yeah. wait that's already so, live yep yeah cool morning, good I to know I should, I should make the post on that but yeah, yeah it's, that's it's, good it's live. <laughs> so like i know uh the main so reputation is not tied to covenants but if you're trying to get like if you're doing callings and you know you're getting zone reputation having that 10 percent is really nice it's like an extra world quest oh yeah for sure reputation mm -hmm. and you can get the legendary power recipes that revered with them plus yeah. the gear is like really good for early shadowlands uh as well so. mm -hmm. As soon as you set a new Hearthstone, you can just quickly cloak out to Stormwind and pick up a new one and then Hearthstone back. So that, yeah. that, I think that's definitely worth because it lasts for an hour as well. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I was told about the movement speed gems. Do they work? Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, there's a 5% 5 and 5 a 3%. 5 and 3%, right? Yeah, I yep. think that's really so. good. 8% movement speed is amazing. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... In, yeah. In Keep in mind, a lot of classes, hunters, <laughs> hunters have trailblazer talent. Um, warriors have a PvP talent called like Dragon Rush or something like that. Oh, and um, they don't stack Rush or? or warlocks. No, what I'm saying is, you know, like there there are movement speed gems, there are consumables, mm -hmm. there are talents and PvP talents. So, move, this is something I post in the Loveland Companion. Movement speed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say is the most important, but it's basically the most important thing when it comes to leveling and getting ahead of that pack. We were Especially talking about in the earlier. maw because there's no mount as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So just get ahead, move faster. Mm -hmm. Another Name reason why affliction is better than destruction initially, at <laughs> least uh, in terms of uh, sustain, because you, you want to use burning rush, but you end up, you know, losing all your HP. And with uh, inevitable demise talent as an affliction warlock, uh, if you just multi tag everywhere with agonies, you build up your stacks and you do a quick life drain, and then you're full HP yeah. again. So there's there a lot go. of those kind of things for every class, I'm sure, um, which makes uh, you a little bit faster, a little bit more uh, sustained at your speed. Mm -hmm. You know what's going to happen? There's going to be a quest bug. So it's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm moving super fast. And it's going to be like, oh, no one can turn the quest in. <laughs> actually, I have to tell that actually reminds me. If you, if you guys are planning on leveling in a group, whether it's two people or five people, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are certain quests that are bugged in groups and you just get Ooh. stuck. So if you encounter that, be ready to abandon the quest. We've oh. even encountered on beta. And I, again, I can only talk to what we've encountered on beta, but literally as recent as yesterday on the beta, there were there were certain quests that we tried to do as a group and it bugged out so badly we had to fly back to Oribos oh. and fly back to the zone we were questing in to continue the quest chain. So if you okay. encounter an issue, Brace for impact because as far and unless they fix it in the past literal twenty four hours, you might have trouble. I, I do list those in here. Let me be very specific just so you guys can see them. It's um you on listed them on guide, your companion map too. Companion. Mm -hmm. Tip yep, tips, tricks, and advice is the tab. Okay, and I it see. Is, it. It's a, it's like the biggest point. It says additionally if you're leveling in a group, blah blah blah, it'll tell you the uh, the quests there. Mm. So Maybe I wish I could help you on this later on because uh, just yeah. being like, hey, you know, these are some issues yeah. you might run into in a really cool week or Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that was a very good leveling aside to include, as, you know, I'm sure many people want to be like grouping up and questing with your friends and there might actually mm -hmm. be some issues. So, um, yeah, that was really good to add. Uh, the one in the mall, is that the one, the quest where you're given stealth and you're supposed to move? Yeah, so the, the, the when you first encounter Jaina, after you kill those six uh, Mossworn, she teleports you. Mm -hmm. um, 
disband they're disband the group there as you run down into the cave and you, you fight like the mini boss in front of the cave. You uh -huh. run disband for that quest. And then also the one you just referenced at the very end where she stealths you and you have to walk up to the waystone. Mm -hmm. You want to disband for that one too. Yeah. All right. So All right, covenants. but yeah, companion app. Let me Back link it one more time, yeah. and then we continue with covenants. There it is: tips, tricks, uh, weak auras, uh, list of items, consumables, uh, everything. Thank you, brutal. And I've also thrown it into work chat, so if we have time, we can maybe cover it uh, this evening, just so people not watching the show can be aware yeah. that there is this companion. Mm -hmm. You guys can pull from it. Like I know it advertises my Discord and everything. If you guys just want to pull from it too, you don't don't feel obligated to like to bro broadcast and advertise for me. You can just. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, <laughs> we're so short on time. Like <laughs> yeah, we we love to like handcraft a guy. Like hey, look, you do not join thing. the Discord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alliance not welcome in the Discord. <laughs> oh no. Right. Okay, I guess I'm not using this app anymore. <laughs> All right, Covenants perk. Yeah. You were about Covenants. to go. Let's, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I think we can briefly discuss the technical aspect and then some of the collectibles, which is, um, I feel like everyone's really split. Like, so many people like the transmog, but then so many people are just like, tell me what's good, you know, to play at max level, as, you know, we already covered in the show with the uh, Affliction Warlock asking you. So, what do you get that is, like, beneficial for player progression or transformative with your Covenant? You unlock two abilities, a signature and a class ability um, that can, you know, impact your rotation, uh, which is, you know, pretty controversial. And then as you progress, you can unlock soul binds, which are like different talent trees and you can put uh, conduits in them to make some of your abilities stronger. And as you get more renown, as you like progress more each week, you can unlock more of the tree and at higher levels, more soul binds are available. So uh, covenants are pretty uh, transformative, and you can you can't just sort of swap like every other day. You have to do a series of quests um, uh, centered around around uh, a weekly reset. Mm -hmm. So everyone is like, "What is the best covenant? What if I pick the wrong one? Like, what would affect my progression? Am I stuck with it?" So yeah, um, there are some covenants which are quote better than others. But in the Wowhead guys, we try to highlight how good every covenant is for type of content. So like one might be, you know, 10 DPS better and all of them are pretty great. Or, you know, one might be actually pretty bad. So we've tried to not just tell you the best one, but how all of them are relative to each other in case you're like, I really like Night Fae, but I don't think it's number one, but maybe it's number two. So that's okay. Maybe I'll be the Night Fae and like look really cool and get armor and still be pretty good at raiding. Mm -hmm. Um... And we did, I'll jump around a little, but when we asked Ian about this in our uh, interview, like how are you going to handle Covenant and Legendary Balance after Shadowlands goes live, uh, he said that they want to like nerf and buff conservatively so a Covenant doesn't feel drastically different, but they would do bigger changes surrounding patches like a reset. And they said if they felt really forced to, they could make a big Covenant change and then reset everyone's um swap history so mm -hmm. if like you oh, got a good. huge nerf then that's good yeah you wouldn't feel like you were you know punished for it yeah covenant, you know so like minor things you know they they want to make minor changes but if they have to make something big they always have the option of just uh like giving people a free swap which mm -hmm. i thought that was i thought that was promising because a lot of people are very worried that they're going to pick quote the wrong covenant mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to be benched because I'm thinking Night Fate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you get benched for playing Night Fate, I'll invite you. All you have to do is transfer to Alliance. If I get benched playing Night Fate, means I'm playing poorly because Night Fate is the best for hunters right now. Yeah. Ugh, man. Well, I maybe it distracts you. you so much that you don't even touch your keyboard. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't <laughs> play this. I can't play this. Yeah. Okay, we're benching you. Yeah, just just oh a note goodness. on the tuning. I mean, like we said earlier, Blizzard is still tweaking them uh, because they want them all to feel, I guess, you know, equal in different ways with strength. So it's not like everyone feels that they have to go Kyrian for a certain mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. type of content or Night Fae. Mm -hmm. um, so like guide writers and sims everywhere, they're like working really hard to keep up. But 
you know, like, it's pretty unusual to have, like, you know, covenants change the date of the expansion. So Literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah please be patient. Wild. Everyone is trying to help you. And in some cases, the people helping, they're not, you know, they're trying to analyze everything. They're not just trying to tell you, like, this is the best, the end. They're trying to explain how everything works together and what is, you know, almost the best or, like, what's still pretty good to use. And it's just hard to... Uh, it's hard to work on all that when things keep changing, but we are trying to be on top of it uh, mm -hmm. as much as possible. So mm -hmm. as of writing this, we've had Warlock and Hunter changes this morning, as well as that's a us. change. Annie, that's the us. Bone Smith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, um, you know, definitely check out the Wowhead guides on those topics. We've all been working super hard on them but also keep in mind Link that it again. many things will not be available uh right at launch because a lot of things are locked behind renown so if you're like oh man this ability looks really op and you're, and it could be like oh well you need like renown 30 for that so you know just keep in mind that not a lot of stuff opens up this first no that that's also a good point like there's certain uh there's certain i don't remember the exact discussion and i'm sure if you read the guides i'm sure they cover it uh the link is right there it links you to every single covenant every single spec and everything that you may want to know uh but there was something along the lines of kirian might be better for raids for affliction warlocks however it takes you this long to get the follower that you want and if you pick right. night fey you get to unlock one that has two potency slots early Something along those lines. Uh, point is, uh, something might be stronger earlier just because of the follower that you unlock early on. Uh, so you can keep that in mind as well. Yeah. So, yeah, many things are changing. We are updating you as much as we can. Um, I've noticed and, that as well. You know, I, I looked yes. at the guide before and it's like, Affliction, Kieran, Kieran. I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm going Kieran. <laughs> And then a couple of days ago, it's like carry a night fade. And I was like, wait, is the night fade dream real? Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm happy. It's not a dream, it's a nightmare. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy now. I can I can be night fade and not feel like I'm choosing one that's not as strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we've had a lot of discussions about covenants uh, on this show, obviously. I just, I just hope that um, they can take some of these systems and reuse them for future expansions because it's gonna feel bad like you know mm -hmm. like yeah after Shadowlands it's like oh well my like little now class has gone. gone away yeah um how are they gonna you know are they gonna add like even more systems but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we'll probably discuss covenants a little bit more in the interview part of the show but why don't we highlight some of the fashion craft because I know like we've got 50% of people on the site that want to know best covenant and then 50% that are like wow dressing room <laughs> So why don't we just say a few words on the fashion for the people who are here for the transmog uh, on Wowhead. Mm -hmm. um, so Annie, I think, is going to be showing some armor sets uh, from Wowhead. Uh, we have made a series of detailed armor and weapon guides on Wowhead. If you don't know, uh, every covenant has uh, a special armor set for your uh, armor type. And that comes in four different tints, and every piece has a different source, and it changes across uh, covenants. So, like Kyrian, for example, has two complete sets from a mini game, while like Night Bay has, you know, there are some items from like Reputation vendors. Um, there are some things from your Covenant campaign. It's all over the place, so you definitely want to check out the guides to learn how you get everything. It's not like you know you finish the quest line and you get this ensemble with everything you have to do all these you know tasks across the world to get every piece mm -hmm. and the part i'm, I I'm linking people... it here as well in case you guys yeah. want to see uh, all the different sources uh, the slideshow i was showing right now was the different armor types for night fey uh so yeah as perk said there's many different yeah of course uh there's <laughs> many different sources for uh, all the things so uh, if you check out that link you can see uh whichever part interests you so another thing is that I don't think this has been highlighted as much because it wasn't at initially BlizzCon, but uh, there are weapons that match all the sets. And mm -hmm. I think that's just important to highlight too. And they have totally different sources as well. Many of them are tied to the mini games, um, which, you know, will take a while to unlock. And, you know, same thing, a set of weapons, 
four tints, uh, they match everything. And uh, I think it's really good that the weapons are available because the Castle Nathria um, weapons... Oh, never mind. I, I made that up. One of the tints <laughs> is from Castle Nathria. And uh, they have um, their Covenant-specific tints. So, like, the Night Fae get an Arden wield weapon, even though, you know, Castle Nathria is you know, vampire-themed and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I definitely check out the weapons, too. We have dressing room links for everything. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I was, that's what I was gonna say. The mini games have a set of covenant esque weapons that one can get. So if you are like a night fae and you have Castle Nathria armor and you're like, man, I want a vampire weapon, through the mini games you can get a vampire weapon. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. I just um, also noticed that we are nearing the one hour thirty. Oh, we're nearing yeah. the one hour thirty till launch yeah. time. Let's wrap it up, baby. Let's wrap it up. Let's go. Yeah, so uh, let's yeah. cover the next topics a little bit faster, yeah. and we'll try to keep track of class, uh, not class, of chat as well. I see somebody asking for the week course for experience. Uh, basically, that was part of the. Uh, companion app that Brutal had put in there. If you check out that doc uh, at the bottom, there's different tabs and there's something called add-ons and weak auras. That's where you can check it out. Uh, you you need the main add-on uh, weak aura, of course, and then you've got the different Vagos. Oh, and yeah. Aelid was kind enough to link the specific one for the experience bar. You can go for that too. All right. So yeah. um, instead, of, instead of explaining every little feature in your covenant, um, why don't we just highlight like a few things that you think aren't as well known that people could be surprised by? So I know I know Annie that like you were more like saving it, you know, like you weren't doing all the quests, want to save it for the stream. Did you have anything that stood out brutal that were like, oh, that's kind of cool? I didn't, you know, expect. In that. relation to like what what you can do or find in the cover. Yeah, like like anything interesting, like oh, there's like this you know interesting mini game or like this character shows up. I or mean, something. because I had a few. You know, I know about the Night Fae. Uh, garden, if I'm not mistaken, the yeah, Necrolord Abomination, stuff like that. Like I, yeah. I do appreciate the fact that every covenant has some kind of unique flavor, unique, you know, you know, draw or attraction to it. I don't know all the little details, but I'm, I am excited. Even though I don't want to be Night Fae personally, I am excited <laughs> just to get in there and just to see, you know, across you know, all of my characters, what each one has to offer. Yeah. Perk, what are you going actually? Uh, Night Fae because nice. of the artist field and uh, <sighs> Night Elf story. So. <laughs> nice. We're, we're a full team of Night Fae. <laughs> yes. And so I can hear Night how excited Fae Brutal is about that. I'm so excited, let me fight. tell you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we can all meet up and all be in our fox form and be very happy. Agree yeah. to disagree. <laughs> I need like a, a Pepe soul shaped form. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so just to highlight like a few things very quickly, rapid fire, what I thought were just like little weird, interesting things. Um, there are, there's an abomination mini game for Maldraxxus and you can dress up your abomination with different hats uh, and decorations, which is interesting. Uh, the Night Fae, as part of the anima conductor, you can go to an amphitheater and kill theater guests and that's tied to reputation and then you can unlock weapons. Uh, there's just like l interesting things. There is a cat that is apparently tied to Revendreth. Apparently, all cats go to Revendreth, uh, which I think is adorable <laughs> because they're always in trouble. Um, and yeah, I just I just think there's a lot of little things to explore. So if you're worrying that like oh you know there's nothing to do until season one, you can work on a lot of covenant things and like work on your transportation network, work on the anima conductor, work on these different armor and weapons. And yeah, just, you know, there's there's like a lot of little things to explore. Even the rare spawns, like there are, there's a rare in Bastion that drops a weapon with the original silver hand aesthetic. So if you're a paladin, you probably really want that. Uh, there's Sinrunner Blanche in Revendreth. I don't know why Blanche is <laughs> evil now, but uh, Blanche has gone there after her death. And yeah, why don't we, in the interest of time, uh, I'll direct you to Wowhead to read up, up, all the Covenant guides. Uh, awesome job to my team. And we can highlight subs and then move into the interview um, portion of the show. I think that sounds like a great idea. 
Uh, let me quickly shout out the people who have been supporting the channel. We have Happy Days 0518 with a three month resub, Banky the Machine with the four month resub, and Gunslinger Matty with the 200 bits. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you for supporting Wowhead. So yeah, so the Ian portion of the show, uh, we were fortunate enough to be given not only a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, Ian on Thursday, on last week, but we also sat in on a group interview. So that was really awesome that we got two interviews with the game director right at the end of Shadowlands. So, you know, we could ask a lot of serious questions and get straight answers as opposed to, you know, hearing things that might be like, you know, a news reveal or something we data mine the next day. So it was good to ask questions about the system now that things were fully um, in place and kind of do a Shadowlands retrospective. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, like, you know, Ian talks really fast. So two hours of Ian interviews is a lot to read, but we'll just go over some of the highlights in the interest of time. Yeah. And we've transcribed the full thing on Wowhead. I think that sounds like a so, good plan. Mm -hmm. In our one-on-one -on -one interview, some of the things I thought were interesting is that the tier sets are still planned, the class tier sets, and they the art is already done for them. So that's really cool. We're getting class tier sets in Shadowlands. Yes. Um, we learned with the Great Vault, there's still a little bit of confusion surrounding this, but a lot of people were uh, concerned that, you know, do I kill one boss on Mythic Difficulty? Like, can I get loot from the end boss if I've never killed him before? Because, you know, he is the best loot. And apparently, you need to, like, kill that end boss once in order to see it on the Great Vault loot table. So no one, you know, can look out and get something from a boss they haven't killed yet. Mm -hmm. So that was a good clarification. Yeah, that's good. Um, and then you yeah, also in that interview they discussed you know buffing and nerfing the covenants and how they had mm -hmm. that backup uh, system in case they really felt they had to. But it seems they don't want to change the spirit of the abilities drastically um, in the middle of a raid tier, so that they might just do number tuning. But if they have to totally rework it, then people would get you know um, very frustrated. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, some of the highlight topics, we asked about the Flight Master's Whistle, and it's not going to be in Shadowlands, which is a little sad. Um, yeah, those are really useful. Reason, yeah, the reasoning was a little confusing because they said, oh, we added it back when we had emissaries and, like, the wardens would take you all over the place, and it was nice to have the whistle to reduce time, and now that we've got callings, which work very differently, we don't need the whistle, to which, you know, many players would say, oh, but I liked the whistle when I was, you know, underwater or stuck somewhere or not doing mm -hmm. my, you know, emissary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you guys think about that change? Because I, I feel like it's still needed. So I definitely agree. It would be nice to have it. That being said, I will gleefully sacrifice X months of flight whistle if that guarantees I get flying a little bit sooner in the expansion i'm, I'm a little give and take oh, perk is little, gone you know what i mean hello oh, goodbye Can perk. You hear me? hi perk okay hello. i think you're back now i heard something weird and then your mouth was but i didn't cat. hear anything okay all right, right yeah because you're back I, i've been saying this before the show like i i love this mic i love the sound i love the runes but the way the wires are set up is like you breathe on them the wrong way and then sometimes <laughs> the sound, like goes out and when you have a cat that has like very mm. yeah paws, like er, moving um, but yeah, he's he's not on the screen, but he's like sitting on the desk, shifting his weight and moving wires on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I was gonna say that ties into what Ian then hastened to say afterwards, which sounded it sounded like generic at first, but then rereading, I'm like, oh, he said that flying would not require reputation; it would require renown. I'm like, okay, we knew that. But then he said it was coming in the first major content patch of Shadowlands. And normally flying comes in the second major yeah. content patch. It's, it's true. So, flying is normally delayed. Yeah, Bring so, it. Yeah. So are we getting flying sooner? It seemed, based on what he told us, that all you had to do was to, you know, just do the Covenant campaign and then the version coming in the future patch. So mm -hmm. unless, you know, unless 9.1 is super late, I, I think we're getting it sooner than later. Yeah, it sounds like it. And that's yes, awesome please. news. Maybe yeah. then not having a flight whistle isn't too bad, like Brutal said. Yes. Yeah. And piecing it together, um, in another question, 
we asked Ian if the Shadowlands launch delays had affected the uh, content pacing for the first major patch after Shadowlands, and he said that, you know, with everything being shuffled around, uh, they were still preserving the original um, content pacing between launch and, you know, 9-1, so, you know, now that launch is delayed, 9-1 was a little delayed, but it was, it was going to be like, there wasn't going to be a huge uh, break between launch and patch content. Mm -hmm. which is what people are caring that's about good. yeah that's so, that's really that's good, good. Mm -hmm. it does seem like we could be if that if that is the patch where flying is coming that seems really promising mm -hmm. oh wouldn't it be interesting if that free mount was that they were promising is oh, if they yeah. you know revealed it and they're like oh you know look at this beautiful thing that's free that can fly well guess what you know flying is also coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i forgot could, about them yeah though. that's right yeah um but yeah so that was a very interesting like a little bit of disappointment but then oh maybe we'll get flying sooner answer which um you know i thought was important to discuss on the show oh yeah for sure flying is flying is so nice it, it just makes uh, going back to doing world quests and things like that so much so much mm -hmm. more enjoyable yeah um the next topic was legendaries we got comfort again like ian's very good at these like it's like very lawyer it's like well here's a bad thing but then like here's also a good thing to like look forward to yeah ian is actually uh, amazing at talking about yeah. things even if something is really bad ian manages to yeah. you know make me feel like everything's gonna be all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> So we asked about transmogging legendaries because they've got that really cool like ice crown spiky vibe to them. Mm -hmm. And he said that you can't transmog to the legendary appearance at launch. And um, you, you, so like you shouldn't craft a bunch of legendaries and hope that you unlock the appearance and then, you know, you can, cra you can transmog to a full set. He said in a future patch though, there would be a way to acquire um, appearances for that transmog look. So again, mm -hmm. don't craft all the legendaries now yep. and then hope they unlock in the future. There'll be like another version of the item you can collect. Like, I don't know, an ensemble. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking there's going to be a raid because we were like, hey, Ian, we data mined six different colors for this armor. <laughs> and like that that tends to line up with the new, you know, PvP raid season. And he's like, oh, there, there might be very likely a way in which you can get the other tints in the mm -hmm. future. So my guess would be a Maw raid with, uh, you know, six tints, uh, two PvP uh, for raiding. That That's my mm -hmm. guess. But we don't know. We just know that you can transmog to them in the future. Don't waste your materials crafting a full set now, though. Yep. That's good to know, because I feel like that's something that I would do, perhaps. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I need to need to up my ATT percentage, so I, I need to craft all of these so I have them as soon as it's ready. Uh, but no, just wait, and there will be a different way to get those transmog appearances. Good to yeah. know. Um, this next topic, um, we asked, people asked in the group interview in the, uh, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, a few lore-themed questions, and, um, they weren't, you know, we're not gonna get into, like, cosmic reveals and this and that, but he had a few general answers that I thought were really interesting. Someone asked, uh, about Sylvanas and Garrosh, if their stories were still the same, because, like, that was a huge controversy at BlizzCon, um, you know, two years ago. And mm -hmm. uh, apparently uh, Ian said that their stories are going to diverge more now. And like very soon it will be clear they're on two very different paths. And uh, I just thought that was interesting. Plus in that uh, afterlife cinematic, we saw Garrosh there. So does that mean like, oh, it'll be obvious they're on different paths. Cause like, is, is Garrosh gonna be in Shadowlands? Like, are we gonna, you know, see both of them in the expansion? I think that would be interesting. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's interesting because it's clearly hinted and implied in many um, in many different uh, instances too, not just this time. It's been talked about before how mm -hmm. learning more about Sylvanas will make it feel really different from what happened with Garish. But I feel like the TLDR story is still going to be the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the, the TLDR story is still going to be Horde leader uh, went, went maniac for one reason or another. Hey, hey. And then we... <laughs> hey. 
Listen, all right. I can't. I, I I don't have any association with these weirdos. All right. I'm just, I'm just a member of the well, horde. I mean, I'm not a leader. A A A T T told you to turn this quest in to burn down Telrissil, so you did. How dare you, brutal? No big deal. It's all good. Oh wow. Fine. No big deal. Yeah. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what they feel like is important enough for us to feel like it, it was different because the mm -hmm. grand scheme of things still feel similar um yeah. yeah especially for people that maybe took a break so like you know if you miss a few if you miss like the cinematic where they reveal things you might still be confused what's uh going on <laughs> yeah because at the end of the day there's still a war chief that went wrong you know like yeah. you, you can't change that part of it but uh, but i guess we'll see later on and then it's like oh you know one tried to turn back time and the <laughs> other one try to you know go to a different uh you know realm in time yeah um yeah I mean, another one of the topics i thought was interesting um again not super in-depth in lore but i think even casual people would appreciate it is how um they talked about the strengths of storytelling in an mmo like even things you don't consciously think about and how bfa was trying to do a lot of like really complex nuanced things and tell like kind of small stories and like politics and shifting perspectives and intrigue and while it's a compelling story uh, i thought it was interesting how ian admitted that it didn't play to the strengths of what the mmo genre can do which is create this you know open world like bigger scale cosmic mm -hmm. fantasy and mm -hmm. i just thought that was interesting like you know you don't need to be a lore expert and maybe it's even like hey like you shouldn't need to be a lore expert to understand the story like you should log in and be like wow you know like <laughs> you know unicorns or you know you know spikes <laughs> like you should just which i i thought it was uh an interesting and i think welcome shift is that something you guys have maybe felt in bfa like it's not super lore people that like oh like i, I don't know what i'm doing here but you know i'm like cool cinematic popped up um personally i think yeah. it's a cool, i think it's a good return to like their roots I, I i agree like i'm i'm i think for the first time in a long time i'm really interested to see how things unfold in shadowlands i have no idea i'm not a lore expert you know yeah. I'm, I'm it's just not my forte but for me i do like to keep up with things and understand things to the best of my ability and with the jailer and you know this this other realm that we're going into i think it's a lot more interesting than king rastakhan and princess Talon. i'm not saying those are bad stories or things that right. i didn't enjoy but this is just a larger scale like you were saying it's mm -hmm. something very different and very much more warcrafty at least to oh yeah me. yeah no so i I'm, completely I'm agree with that absolutely yeah i mm -hmm. think it also puts the player in like it centers the player too so you feel like you're making a difference while sometimes it's like wait like like wait wait why did my faction leader do this really stupid thing mm -hmm. like why are they all upset <laughs> yeah. like now i'm i'm turning like in this quest like i'm so confused i just feel like i'm i'm watching the story as opposed to like you know Being a part doing of it. Yeah. what i want to do so yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, as a sad side note, uh, Nathanos is very likely in Shadowlands. Um, <laughs> of course. We asked about that. We're like, oh, you know. Kill him. Don't worry. We'll like, kill are we going to see him again? And we'll he's kill like, him again. Yeah, he said what he said for a reason. So um, <laughs> maybe we'll get, like, maybe, like, when will he stop escaping? Like, this dude just, like, escapes no matter what. Like, he's over in Darkshore, then he's, you know, in Bizarre Lore, and then he, like, you know. Now he's happy he's dead. It's just like, come on, dude. Like, just, like, stop running away from us. <laughs> yep. So, my guess, I wonder if he would be, like, a mid, a midpoint boss. Like, maybe he'd be the Gul'dan of, uh, I don't know, of this, of this, uh, expansion. Hmm. You know, like a 9.1 boss. I, I, I do feel like we're gonna see him before we see Sylvanas. And maybe yeah, he will probably. lead us to her in one way or another. Yeah, it's interesting because she wasn't very happy with him a few no, she wasn't. books. So mm -hmm. maybe it's like he's gonna think like they're gonna have this happy reunion. She's gonna be like, no, like, you <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's like, any you know. way he's gonna be like, you know what, Savannah's, you suck. I'm gonna go and help the Horde and the Alliance. <laughs> I think he's like so far gone at this point. Mm -hmm. Like he just wants to, he <laughs> just just wants to like case. serve her and like get on her good side. And you know, like the the book, like he he just she just sort of like outright rejected him, and he just felt like so bad and just like wanted to keep you know following her orders. You almost I I almost felt bad for him, and I cannot mm. stand the character. So 
<laughs> maybe well sylvanas if you don't want me then can you do me the honor and kill me forever yes there you go so oh him. so we never get to kill him she kills him <laughs> I think Tehran should. Well, actually, I agree. Yeah, I hope Tehran does. I, I, I don't know. Tehran needs to like kill Nathanos, and like a tree needs to just like grow up from his body, and then like she can have her like land back. Like, I think it's. I think it's gonna take <laughs> Made more out of than him. defeating Nathanos to make her feel like things have been righted. But I would uh -huh. like to see her actually win, as opposed to like, oh, you know, footnote: he actually escaped, type deal. Mm -hmm. So, um. Speaking of reveals in the jailer, so in an earlier interview with Ian, like June, uh, someone asked that, you know, who's the final boss? And Ian made it seem like the jailer was the final boss. But then mm -hmm. another group um, interviewed um, other Blizzard developers last week, and they said, they said, oh, yeah, so obviously the jailer's the final boss. And they're like, actually, we're not going to say because <laughs> we want to see how things you know, play out and it'll play a major role, but we don't know where he is yet. And it's mm -hmm. like, whoa. Like, yeah, so it's not completely finalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember in Warlords, they initially said that Gromash was the final boss and then, you know, Arkmon ended up being the final boss. So, you you know, are they revising story things? Like, you know, like, what's going on with the Jailer? I'm, I'm just very curious. Because mm -hmm. um, I can't really think who it would be, like, yeah, I don't know either. Honest, you know, the Arbiter, like, Arthas, like, you know, who, who knows at this point? Yeah. Yeah, because it definitely sounded like it's definitely a um, consideration, but not a uh, final decision yet. It, it yeah, sounds like yeah, they have a couple options. Here, yeah. yeah, they have mm -hmm. a couple options of how it would work out, and then maybe they'll see how, how we react to the, you know, different patches before that and uh, see what seems um, yeah. more fitting. The only thing I could think of is because they keep hinting, we'll learn more about like Lich King lore or other things. If they'd want the final boss to be something more recognizable, because the jailer looks really cool, but he's a brand new character, um, mm -hmm. and maybe they're thinking if they end with, I don't know, like the final boss is like the Lich King or like Ner Nerzul or you know, I don't know, Sargeras or Arthas, or, you know, s some recognizable name if they think that mm -hmm. could be better for, mm -hmm. you know, PR and, you know, bring in, like, we're just, just, you know, ending the story on a note that even casual players will be hyped to, you know, finish the end of the instance and defeat a named NPC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But and maybe I, it's, yeah. maybe it's even a uh, comparison between the, 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 the boss fights themselves. Maybe maybe there's a name which is lesser than the jailer, but would have a much cooler sort of raid fight. So then it it becomes more exciting, maybe uh, gameplay wise. Yeah, I do think about what Blizzard has tried to say. You know, we don't want like you know morally gray. You know, politics. We want like a clear fantasy story with you know a clear villain. So I don't think there's going to be a bait and switch where it's like. The jailer is the good guy all along. You know, <laughs> being yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do think, don't you? Yeah. yeah, no, we've had Sylvanas for that already. Yeah. I do think that um, he's definitely going to be on, like, the forces that we want to defeat. But maybe, um, you know, maybe there'll be, like, other villains that come in. Like, there have been hints, you know, that, like, he was working with the Dreadlords. Maybe there'll be some of that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe uh, figures associated with the Lith King Helm. Like, everyone really wants to see Arthas in some form. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another interesting thing from my group interview with Ian, he was discussing how, like, the metrics you always hear at the investors' calls that get quoted around, mm -hmm. like, that's not really something they, as developers, go by, and you need to use certain words when talking to business investors. But that's not designed for the player base. So things like, you know, daily active users, that's not really something they care about. Or like, they're not focusing on if this activity is played 24-7, it means it's the best activity. Um, it's just like a standard metric that you use when discussing products. And when you have this in call, you know, with like very big people in business discussing Candy Crush and Call of Duty, you have to use metrics, even though they sound kind of like weird and business suity. Mm -hmm. And he actually had a very interesting example of um, in Burning Crusade, everyone ran Mechagnar because it was good for the badge of justice and it was uh, super short and pretty easy, but that doesn't mean you 
like that doesn't mean that you need to make like a billion mechanar dungeons and it's like oh they'll just play non-stop you know by that logic <laughs> island expeditions would be the best content in the game because yeah people did that so the he was best trying, yeah he was trying to show that like that's not that's not really a metric that people um that like that they sort of value internally and like they're trying not to design things where you know you know how long did you spend doing this is the is a sign of success mm -hmm. so I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's an to interesting me, I agree. comparison. Yeah. So. I uh, saw somebody more... else. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I saw somebody else ask again uh, the topic that we mentioned earlier on. Um, with the launch, which is, by the way, in one hour and 13 minutes, uh, with the launch, you do not have to log out. The game will update itself. Uh, we already have the game uh, installed. What happens is Blizzard just sort of. Uh, clicks the switch and then the expansion is live. So you don't log out, you log in and you just hang out at the keep as an Alliance player. And if you're a Horde player, you delete your character and create an Alliance, <laughs> no I'm kidding. Uh, you probably go to Orgrimmar or similar and do the same thing. So uh, yeah, you just, you don't have to log out. You just, you just yeah. go there. So as a final topic, before we open things up to questions or maybe discuss like just general WoWhead updates, um, I just wanted to highlight, um, you know, as the pandemic goes on and people are worried about, you know, continuing to work from home, we asked a question about how, you know, why the team thought they had the Shadowlands delays and, you know, maybe some things they would do in the future to combat it if working from home, uh, you know, kept being extended. This was tied into the patch schedule question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I just, it's something that they are actively working on a post-mortem of the Shadowlands development now. And they have some ideas as to why things went slower. And they said that, you know, at first it felt like they were ahead because when you work from home, the meetings are better. Like if you're sharing art in a presentation or you're, you know, giving updates on what you're doing as the project is in early stages, like that is really smooth. And I think we saw that in the alpha, like stuff seemed very... Like the early stuff seemed to be really chugging along. Oh yeah. But then when you move into the process where you need to actually, you know, take your rough draft and play it through and be in the same room with people and you know have those spontaneous reactions and like just quickly share your knee jerk reaction if an ability feels good or not, that got really bogged down um, working from home. Mm -hmm. So they seem to have learned a lot how that was the thing that dragged on and they're working on a post-mortem now so if working from home continues through patches they're like more aware um that that this thing that this part takes more time when you are not in an office together yep makes sense mm -hmm. yeah and he is funny he answered the question he ended it by being like oh you know um there's a lot to learn and improve upon I'm sure we'll make entirely different mistakes next time. So. <laughs> of course. Always learn from mistakes. Um, yeah. Oh Something my god, waiting an hour is so hard. No, I just read yeah. the comment. Go ahead. <laughs> Something else I thought when we asked, like, were the delays worth it? Um, they talked about how while, like, the endgame team was updating a lot of stuff, a lot of the other teams were uh, already done, and they were able to add some polish that mm, normally mm -hmm. they wouldn't have time for. And I thought that was really cool and it made me, I mean, it's in an ideal world, I feel like it would be good if there was an earlier deadline or like a week of time where people could just add fun things because they gave examples how, you know, they added more little references to all the zones or they added, you know, um, NPCs with interesting cameos in uh, Ouroboros uh, that weren't there before. And we saw these things and I think they were really useful and made the game come to life. Like people were... Like Sunwalker Desco is in Orbos now with flavor text. Um, Thessarian and, and Kultira are there. Um, lots of characters from WoW's past now have more dialogue options. And yeah, that's not gameplay changing, but I think it adds to the world and makes it feel It adds flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It like completes so, the immersion. Yeah, so I think it's just, uh, you know, sometimes the little things have a big impact mm -hmm. and um you know I, I think it would be nice to uh you know make sure those things are included in future expansions and 
maybe just was like a good creativity lesson like oh if you're ahead of schedule you can add fun things you know you're adding stuff you really like wouldn't it be cool if that could just be a regular part of game development adding stuff you like like you know why are the things that you enjoy putting in why are some of those things why don't we not have time for them you know mm -hmm. should we do things to make the game feel more alive mm -hmm. so a question yeah. in chat in case there's other people wondering how will leveling with friends of different covenants turn out you don't need to worry about that because we don't actually pick a covenant until we're max level right. things are a little bit different once you have one character already done with your ults afterwards, you can actually pick your covenant early. But with your first character, it's nothing you have to worry about. No one has a covenant. Everyone will go through all the different zones and try out all the different abilities from the different covenants. And you make your final choice at 60. Yeah. Um, I would also say that if you're worried about max level questing, um, the world quest and the callings, you pick them up from your covenant, but everyone has the same objectives. So, you know, you will be going to Bastion to kill rares and then you go back, you know, to your own covenant and you turn that in, but you can do the activity uh, together. Mm -hmm. um, as well as the dungeons too, like it's, there's not, I mean, the stuff in your sanctum is restrictive, but a lot of stuff with dungeons and world quests are not restrictive. Mm -hmm. Another question in chat, we must be in Stormwind when expansion launches. Uh, you don't have to be, but that's where we would recommend you to be. Uh, if you want to do ASAP. If you want to be fast, because the first quest that you get will be in Stormwind. Yeah. Or Orgrimmar. Or Orgrimmar. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, only in Stormwind. The Horde have to go to Stormwind. <laughs> Wait, what's the Horde? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want to be fast. Orgrimmar is still mourning the Sylvanas betrayal, and there is no portal there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know that um, you guys want a little bit of time to, you know, prep your own streams before we go live, um, before you go live on your own channels. But if we had, uh, I know people are asking lots of questions. Uh, if you guys had time, we could answer a few questions um, before wrapping up the show. Um, there's yeah. been tons of, you know, news going out. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not going to cover every little thing, but definitely uh, check Wildhead's uh, front page, get the webhook installed if you want to hear more things like uh, the soundtrack is on Spotify or percussion guides are live or rep guides are live. Uh, you know, all sorts of crazy things are happening today. Um, so yeah, why don't we just answer, open it up to general questions for a few minutes. Um, yeah, and if you guys let's do that. want to go, you know, just let me know and we can wrap it up. But yeah, I'm out. Sure, so sure sounds good. <laughs> yeah. That is officially all the content that we wanted to uh, mention and talk about today. Uh, I have tried to keep track of chat and pick up some questions here and there, but you've if... done great. Oh, thank you've you, done Brunzel. Great. Thank yes. you. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to post them. Uh, if you want the question to be specific to anyone, like Brutal here as our special guest today, uh, then feel free to uh, post them now. Uh, we could do that for a couple minutes, as and then we uh, wrap up. Uh, maybe on the hour to make it exactly an hour left before the launch. And yes, after the stream, we will both be streaming. Uh, Brutal will be streaming on his page. I'll be streaming on my page. Uh, Brutal, what are you leveling again? A hunter, you said? Hunter, the, the superior class between the two. Of course, yes. <laughs> are you... uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll get another blue post on hunters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> Uh, so Brutal will be here leveling his hunter and I will go on and level my warlock. And I will be watching to see if new cinematics get data mined and I will be posting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. New exciting things that we find. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And Kirk will be there be first like... up with all the information. I'll probably be like leveling more closer to the weekend just because like yeah, you know, like some someone needs yeah. to post all the stuff during the week. Someone's again, yeah, you got to do the heavy lifting. I yeah. understand. The hero yeah. we need, but don't deserve perk. <laughs> like all my coworkers are like, I'm free until three, but then like I'm leveling so I can do my stuff. Oops. You know, for uh -huh. my guild that I run, and I'm like, oh okay, I guess I'll like fall down the floor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I have something I want to talk about real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, on the beta, and, and again, this is going to be a very, very, very small subsect of players, but if anyone runs into an issue, specifically in the Arden Wheel, to where your GPU usage skyrockets to 100%, mm. if you mm -hmm. turn off your particle density in your system's settings, that will alleviate a bit of the constraint. There is a bug 
currently um, that I at least that I've discovered and multiple other people have discovered that that uh, was posted on the Blizzard forums. So again, if you're in Ardenweald, if your GPU usage usage skyrockets, if it heats up to like 80 degrees Celsius or whatever, particle density in system settings, turn it off. Be sure to turn it on later, otherwise you won't see spell casts and stuff and raids and dungeons and whatnot. But mm-hmm. it's just a bug that we encountered. Again, it was present as of yesterday, so just letting yeah. you guys know. Good to know. Good to know. Is this noted in your companion app? It is, yes. Okay, perfect. I'm just trying to think of like really important things that could yeah, yeah. drastically affect someone. Because I just noticed that somebody said, can you add that to your doc, Brute? So that's perfect. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. Oh, it's perfect. In there. Perfect. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> this is for the people who may not find the time to read through everything. So Brutal right. is just, you know, giving yeah. us the most important right. tips and tricks uh, yes. in case you don't have time to read. Uh, but the app is there. I can link it one more time. Uh, and also, I would like to uh, maybe, uh, or maybe Katsuki could help us to link the article from today in case people want to go through what we have talked about today. Then you'll have all the different links to all the things um, yeah. using today's article. Because I think we normally have everything listed there, right? Yeah. All, all the, the different topics. topics. Are listed there. Yeah. We also have the survival guide that highlights like even more stuff we didn't get into. Like we have dungeon guides and, you know, mm-hmm. profession guides and. Mount mm-hmm. guides and <laughs> Castle Nathria guides. Yeah. Um. So we have that as well. Um. Also, I believe we're going to post. Uh. Maybe in. Oh, time's running away. Probably in a few minutes. Uh. Uh-huh. Uh, like things you should do like first day or week article. Uh. If you're like a progression uh focused person. Gotcha. You're like oh that's cool. Like mm-hmm. thanks for highlighting mounts, but I just want you know renown. Like tell tell me what I do if I just want to get ready for Nathria. So I think that post is coming pretty soon. Awesome. And the link is up. Thank you, Aelid, for linking it. Uh, We actually have these article links for every show that we do. uh, But I I feel like today is maybe a little bit more uh, important for people to want to go back quick to double check the different things that we talked about. All the links are there. Uh, The the guide to all the different covenants, um, all just all the different topics that we talked about is right there. So makes things a little bit easier. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I, I think uh, it seems like the most popular question today has been, will the servers reset? Do I need to log out? <laughs> um, no. The question, the, the answer is no, don't, don't log out actually. Uh, I encourage you to not log out because then you might have trouble logging back in uh, from experience in previous expansions. Mm-hmm. Uh, just stay online in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. See, I remembered the horde. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ready to uh, do your first quests, which will then take you uh, towards uh, Ice Crown and Shadowlands. Yeah. Yeah. So. If we don't have any more questions, I just want to, you know, shout out the whole Wowhead team, the developers, as well as the content team. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of work throughout the alpha and beta, uh, not just with the data mining, but with all the last minute changes that were added with the launch delays, like these class changes this morning. Uh, we have been working really hard to keep everything up to date, keep track of everything, even though, you know, there are changing costs and like soulbind trees get turned upside down and the conduit system got a big revamp and you know legendaries uh were kind of saved to the end we've all been working really hard to make sense out of all the content you know unlock every bit of the covenant to explain that to you and uh, we hope you just really enjoy our stuff we've seen amazing support leading up to shadowlands i think we've had more traffic this weekend than uh like the peak for battle for azeroth so uh you know we're really humbled by uh, everyone just, you know, using the site for a variety of uh, guides and information. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a crazy uh, it's a crazy amount of work because it's not only looking at all the different classes, it's looking at all the different specs within the classes, it's looking at all the different covenants within the classes, different um, follower within the covenant, the soul binds, the conduits. There's so much work put into this. Shout out to all of you guys who have been working on these guides and for Wowhead for putting it all together, uh, making it easy for us to just quickly navigate. Like, hmm. Warlock, Affliction, Night Fae. <laughs> Great. (laughs) Yeah. So thank you for that. Making the rest of us have an easier time navigating through the jungle. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Also, I want to give a quick last shout out to Gunslinger Matty, who subscribed to the channel. 
uh, Hollis, who also subscribed, thank you very much, and Master Sora for gifting a sub to Mongbat. And uh, somebody asked if we mentioned the no mount zone. Uh, we did. Nargul, thank you for pointing that out as well. Um, that has One indeed been mentioned as well. It's officially, ago. yeah, it's officially an hour left, guys. It's time to wrap up the show. Mm -hmm. Time for us yep. to run into or run onto our own streams. And um, yeah, we'll see you there. For some hunter leveling, go ahead and jump into Brutal Stream. Uh, for some warlock Too leveling, kind. you can Support. tune into my stream. Yeah, if you want to talk about the add-on for leveling, uh, then you can ask Brutal any questions that you may have. And yeah, let's yeah. go. Guys, have it's time. Fun. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> we only get to do this every two years or so. Remember yeah. to drink so water. Enjoy it. Remember yeah, to drink right. water. Now, like, That's right. Being bottleneck, right. like, you can go take a nap, go drink some water, come back a few hours later. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, Don't be frustrated. A new expansion is really special and fun. Mm -hmm. So just try to savor it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's annoying to get... Uh, drinks and food when you when you've gotten started so now is the time go and get your uh snacks and drinks and everything hopefully the more healthy kinds and uh clean your yeah room. <laughs> a, a, a clean office is really good for like your, you know like, i happiness. yes i actually had a huge uh i i did like a whole like vacuum mopping tidying everything today because i was like i need my yes. head to be clear there you go. Yes. i need my head to be to clear Yep. I vacuumed. I got you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did everything. Yeah. All right. Light a candle. Make it smell <laughs> good in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for watching and tuning in. Good luck in your adventures into the Shadowlands. And uh, don't worry too much about the whole Covenant things at the end of the day. It's about having fun. Also, you don't even have to worry about Covenants until level 60. Um, and yeah. You yeah, can just have fun leveling. Yeah, today. have fun leveling. Uh, there's no rush to be done before reset time because there's nothing to do at max level. So, yeah, awesome. nothing. And nothing why, that why will give you an today? advantage. <laughs> yeah, you lots of things you can do, but you know, no stress yeah. to like start. You can't craft no. a legendary in a day. No. The, the, okay. The only time frame that you might want to have is to level within a week. That's the only. Yeah. That's the only one. Uh, so try to be done before reset time next week. And, and then you're good yeah. oh yeah and by the time uh we have the next show uh happy thanks thanksgiving will pass so if you're watching from the u.s you know yeah. happy thanksgiving yeah. uh spend time with your family uh don't spend, spend thursday just grinding wow you know have trips <laughs> with your family say mm -hmm. hi to them social mm -hmm. distancing yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you guys for having me i really thank you for joining it. us you. yeah this is awesome yeah it's nice I having like, it. forward it, perspective i like downloaded that. the i don't darn right it is don't you forget it that's right <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck with everything. Uh, good luck with your leveling, Brutal. Good luck with all the work, Perk. And uh, thank you both for what you guys do. And thank you for being here for the show today. Thank and you. we'll see you all next really week. It. Next yeah. week, we'll talk about all the things that went wrong with the launch. <laughs> <laughs> and fun things at level 60. Oh, a quick high five before we go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I don't know if you remember, Brutal. Uh, Perk, yeah. you need to go the other way. This okay, this way. Brutal, yeah. other way too. Oh, we're so good at this. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, right. All right. Your hand, you, you're actually a little bit more zoomed in, so your hand actually covers Wait. both hands. So we can go with one hand. That's good. All right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's perfect. So uh, I'll do the countdown. All right? Yeah. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and the lions and word working together. <laughs> yep. That was perfect. <laughs> All right. Hey, speaking of Alliance Forward working together, did you guys hear about that uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge that might be coming uh, later on? Oh, yeah. We covered uh, the Forbes interview. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Awesome. We don't yeah. have time to talk about no, it. No, 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 we don't. <laughs> yeah, keep an eye indeed. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great launch. Have everybody. a great launch, everyone. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Have lots of fun and try to stay healthy at the same time. Drink water. Even if you refuse to eat, please drink water. <laughs> maybe a little bit of coffee, maybe. And water. Yes. Healthy. <laughs> if you have one coffee, have two glasses of water too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Good deal. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.